Good day, statisticians. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can evaluate um, what nonlinear model is the most appropriate for a given scenario. So here I have some data. I don't remember where I found it off of somebody on the internet. Hopefully this is real. I don't know. I didn't go and catch these perch in Finland myself, but here's data from 12 perch caught in a lake in Finland. Uh, length in centimeters, weight in grams. Um, I'm hoping this is real. I guess it is. I don't know. Um, but here we have the lengths. Uh, and we they're, they're in order from the tiniest little fish all the way up to the biggest. And then we have their weight in grams, which is from like a little tiny 5.9 gram fish all the way up to a kilogram, a thousand grams. And so what we're going to do is try to evaluate some different models to see what's the best model for predicting weight of a perch um, from the length. And so let's start off with a linear model. All right, let's throw it into some software and shazam, we've thrown it into some software. And here we see a scatter plot of that relationship, right? And here we have a line of best fits. Now, if I look at R, that's pretty gosh darn strong. And R squared is humongous. 90.2% of the variation that exists in the weights of these fish is explained by the least squares regression line there. However, uh oh. Is the form of that relationship really linear? No, no, look, look at our residual plot, positive, negative, positive. We don't actually have a linear relationship between um, the weight of these perch and the length. So, ooh, ooh, that looks all curvy. Well, what if it's exponential? Well, how do we make an exponential? Well, to make an exponential, remember, we'll, we'll, we'll start with, we'll keep our X variable the way it is, right? But then we'll take the natural log or the log base, whatever the heck we want of our Y variable. So let's do that. Um, all right, natural log all the weights. Let's see. Well, I did that. Woohoo! look at that magical magic. Um, so here, I, I did it earlier, we have the lengths of the fish still, right? And But then we have the natural log of their weights. And well, that should have made it lin linear. Did it? it? It didn't. Shoot. If I take a look here, it almost looks like the, it's curved in the other direction a little bit. Now, if I got rid of this point, like that would look kind of okay-ish. But when you look at the residual plot, what do we see? Negative residual, positive residuals, negative residuals. Oop. Um, yeah, so I guess this exponential model isn't going to make this linear either. So what else could we do? Well, uh, maybe, and we love taking logs, don't we? Maybe instead of just doing natural log of the weight, why don't I also do natural log of the length? and just see what happens. What do you think? All right, presto, changeo, ha ha. Well, check this out. Now, I took the natural log of the length, the X and the natural log of the Y. And what happens here? Well, check this out here. That looks kind of straight. Let's look at the residual plot. Whoa, ho, ho. I see there's this kind of lone point all the way over here, but then, I see a relatively equal scattering of positive and negative residuals, right? I mean, I might be like, well, it's negative, positive, negative. Well, it was negative over here. I don't think that. I think that's an artifact of whatever. So I, this, this is in fact uh, the best relationship we can see. That when we took the, uh, the natural log of weight, the natural log of length, we got a very, very nice linear relationship between the natural, uh, again, the natural log of length and the natural log of weight. So here... This is our computer output for the least squares regression line. If I was to write the equation, right? So let's see, what equation can we use to predict the weight from for the um, the predict weight for from length here? Well, let's take a look here. We have a, um, a y-intercept of negative 4.7424, and we add to that 3.0538. Now, when I would typically just write x or length is what X is here. Um, but it's not X though. This is actually, remember, this is the natural log of length. So the input here, the input that I would put in isn't the length itself. I'm gonna plug in the natural log of length. Now when I plug in the natural log of length, what's gonna be output 
is a prediction for the natural log of the weight of this perch, right? So what I'm actually is, I'm plugging in the natural log of a length and I'm gonna get shot out the natural log of the weight, which I could just use algebra to turn into a more natural kind of number. So let's predict the weight of a perch that is 35 centimeters in length. Um, to, to get an intuition for that, let's go, because notice this is all natural log of lengths. 35 is nowhere down there. But if we want to get an intuition, let's take a look at our regular uh, initial scatter plot with X's and um, with, with no, lo um, no logs. I see 35 right here. Um, if I had to just get an intuition for what I would expect, I'm guessing it might be somewhere around here. If I go over this way, maybe around like 500 or so grams. Like that's my intuition for 35 centimeters in length, around 30, um, 35 centimeters in length, around 500 grams, half a kilogram or so. Well, let's let's use this equation to figure it out. So if the if the perch is 35 centimeters in length, I'll plug that in. On negative 4.7424 plus 3.0538 times the natural log of 35, right? And so that is what I would first plug into my calculator. I'm like, okay, um, negative 4.7424 uh, plus 3.0538 times the natural log, I use natural log of 35. And that tells me 6.1149. So 6.1149. Now that's not grams. <laughs> Remember, that's not like saying a 35 centimeter, 35 centimeter fish is like six grams. That's almost nothing. No, no. Remember, this is our prediction for the natural log of the weight, right? So that would mean the natural log of of the weight we predict to be 6.1149, right? Um, to figure out what that is as a, in a like normal human number, right? I'll, I'll undo this by saying, well then, then the weight, the weight should be e to the 6.1149, roughly speaking. So I'll go to my calculator and say, okay, Mr. Calculator, e to the 6.1149 power, or maybe I'll even, just do e to that. I'm just going to copy and paste it just so there's less error, but it's basically the same thing. 452.56. All right, what we predict is that this fish should be 452.56 grams. Is that consistent with just an eyeball? Yeah, it's kind of pretty close to what I was eyeballing there in our scatter plot. Um, but this is the best prediction that we can make. Notice um, we can have. A decent amount of confidence in this prediction because we were making a, a prediction on the inside of our data set, not on the outside. Um, um, we were, this is interpolation, not extrapolation. Notice that our residual plot looks pretty pretty good. Um, notice we started off with our least squares regression line with a pretty big R squared. Um, it actually shrunk for the exponential model, but look at our R squared here, 98.86. Um, Seeing this linear relationship as evidenced by the residual plot, we, we say 98.86% of the variation in the natural log of the weights of these fish can be explained by their lengths. And I should feel pretty confident in predictions I make um, about uh, perch um, in this lake, of course, assuming that this was truly a random sample of perch in Finland. So uh, this is how we could uh, ultimately uh, decide first which model is the best. We decide which model is the best by looking for the first model that'll give us a linear relationship between our um, two variables. The best place to look for that is in our residual plot. Remember, we just use natural logs or we use logs. First, just a log on Y to potentially make an exponential model to create what we call a power model. We'll take the natural log of weight and the natural log of length. I hope this was helpful. Helpful. For you uh, folks, have a beautiful day and have fun doing some problems. Giddy up.